Hi guys, Glader here, and today I have another update video on the RS317 project that I've been working on. I know it's been about two days since the last one, but it took me a little while to do what I'm about to show you. And what I'm about to show you is a server emulator that I wrote from scratch, and it is not exactly RS317 compliant, and the client I'm going to use is called Extended. So in RS317.sharp, there's going to be Extended libraries, uh, which will not implement the 317 specification exactly. So, um, you know, you could still use, you could still use the clients that do, but I'm going to have like these additional libraries in the repository that sort of extend it. And, um, so I've got a little demo. I'm going to connect to the server and everything and start it. But first I want to show you how we actually model packets in the server project. So we have to open up a packet library, and you can see that we've got a few of them here. Uh, we've got, you know, some attributes we have to apply to them, and then you can define some fields. So you can almost think of these like, uh, if you were, imagine mem copying structs. That's not how it is. It's a lot more complicated, but think think of uh, mem, like just mem copying stuff to the wire, if you, if you could do that theoretically in C Sharp, or for these packets. Uh, actually, these packets, you probably could. Um... And then you've got stuff like, you know, set the chat mode. You've got all these uh, packets and stuff. Here's the welcome message, which we're going to see shortly. And so this is how we model packets, and these are registered at uh, runtime. You know, you don't have to actually write any code. You basically just add a new thing to this folder, and they're discovered automatically. You know, much, much, no, no work required. It's, and that's how I prefer it. So that's how we model our packets. Pretty simple, you know, if you can create a class in C Sharp, you can cr literally create a packet, communicate back and forth. Simple. Now, let's go ahead and run the demo. Start up the server real quick. And let me run the extended OpenTK slash OpenGL client. And so what's not standard is the serialization of primitives is not, does not fit the RS-317 protocol. And additionally, the authentication process is nothing like the RS-317 protocol. In fact, it is... Let me log in. It actually um, will use OAuth and JWT authorization, which you'll see pop up on the server in a second. You'll actually see the web token or the token pop up, as you can see. And then we send down the uh, welcome message, you know. And these these things you can actually define, like the unread messages and the day since recovery. You can actually send information for that. So authentication completely stripped out in the extended version to use a separate authentication service, which is running here. It's just an ASP Core application. So. How, how do we, you know, what's the API look like for sending these packets and handling these packets that are coming in? Because, yeah, this does actually has to handle packets too. Can't just send them. So, well, let's take a look at that. Uh, so you basically define a handler. What I'm about to show you is demo code. Is this isn't how you should write your server, but it's just going to show you the API. It's a bunch of packets being sent in a single handler to sort of get us get the client to the point where you can actually see the welcome message. So let's pull that up. And basically all you do is you inherit from this base server request handler and define the payload type that you want to handle. You'll end up capturing it as it comes in. You don't have to you don't have to write any other code anywhere else. It'll automatically get discovered and registered. And you and it's gonna be passed into this handle method, which provides some context as well as the payload. You can use the context to identify who's actually sending it and stuff. So here's a demo code right here. Demo code for a reminder. We're just sending a whole bunch of packets here just so we can get to that point on the client. But you can see you're sending them at a very high level. Uh, the, the API is basically grab the context, you you know grab the service section, actually send back to the uh, sender, and you can actually just create a new instance of the packet that you want to send, you know, initialize the fields, and then it's sent. You do not have to write directly to a stream. You do not have to write bits or read bits. You this is only high level. There's not code behind this that you have to write. You just type new packet, boom, it's sent. 
So, um, you know, obviously you wouldn't send all these packets in the single handler, which handles a session claim, which uh, if you want to take a look at that packet, it's just sending the JWT T up this so you can actually authorize the session that's connecting. So theoretically, you do an asynchronous request to another server to authorize and get some information about this account or character. And then you can queue them up for actually spawning them in the game and stuff. But yeah, you can see uh, some demo packets, you know, really hacked together for the demo purposes, just see if it works and stuff. But yeah, so high level, the idea is developing the server at a high level, abstract away the complexities of networking, or using GladNet 3 and the FreeCraft Core Serializer. Those are two libraries that I maintain for network game emulation, and I'm using them here. And once again, <laughs> they're great. Saved me so much time and result in such a great API for, you know, developing. I do not like pushing bits into a stream. I have to tell you that. I'm not a fan of that. So this is where I've gotten, you know, a lot of you would say it's that's not very far. And you're right, but I'm new to RSPS, so you have to... Give me a little bit of a break. The welcome screen, that's as far as I've gotten to at the moment. It took a lot of setup to get to this point, but I think, uh, you know, and after this video, we're going to progress very quickly, you know, get into the game, or rather fast. I, I mean, we have the source code, so it's it's joke compared to the previous projects that I've worked on for emulation. I, it's the source code. I, I can't stress that enough. We, the source code is, is right here. It's available. And we can change it if I don't like it. And I have. Because I don't. I don't like a lot of the... I didn't like the primitive serialization, so... You know, I changed all that. And that's why we're able to... You know, very simply send these packets. So, yeah, that's the video for today, guys. I just wrote a quick server emulator. My first one. For RuneScape. So... I don't know. As I'm going to continue with the architecture. API is not going to change much. It's, it's going to be event-driven. It's going to be, uh, you know, I, I, I don't want to get into that. I'll show you a video once, once we get there. So thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.